Hello, Dr. Joe here of the drjoe.com and the 2020 forum.com. So, following my last video where I discouraged the use of vitamin A and vitamin E supplements, uh, there was a question that was recurrent, and that question was about what to do with the multivitamin preparations where you have vitamin A and vitamin E. What should you do? And as you know on this channel, I tend to follow the science. Uh, those are the things that I recommend to you. Uh, they have to be scientific for the most part. Uh, if it is my opinion, I'll tell you that it's my opinion. But if it is science, then of course, I'll say it's science. So what should we do uh, with multivitamin preparations? Uh, so I think the first thing we need to do is follow the science. Let's see what uh, the clever guys in the uh, United States Preventive Services Task Force are saying regarding uh, the use of uh, multivitamin preparations that contain vitamin A and vitamin E. So if we're going to follow the science, then we have to come back to the uh, U.S. Preventive Services Task Force uh, website uh, to see what recommendation they are making for the use of multivitamin supplementation to uh, prevent cardiovascular disease and cancer. So let's scroll down to what they're saying as far as multivitamin use is concerned. Uh, so here we go. Uh, community dwelling non-pregnant adults. The U.S. Uh, Preventive Services Task Force concludes that the current evidence is insufficient to assess the balance of benefits and harms of the use of multivitamin supplements for the prevention of cardiovascular disease or cancer. So what they're saying here is that they haven't got enough evidence to make any standout recommendation regarding the use of multivitamins uh, containing vitamin A and vitamin E. This is in contrast to the standalone vitamin E or the vitamin A beta carotene uh, supplements where they recommend against their use uh, for the prevention of cardiovascular disease or cancer because for the standalone uh, vitamin preparations, they feel the harm outweighs uh, the benefits. But for the multivitamin preparations, they're not sure because they don't have enough evidence to make any standard recommendation. So that being the case, what should we do uh, regarding uh, multivitamin preparations? So if there is not enough evidence in the science to guide us, what should we do instead? So what to do in this instance is we have to be guided by the recommended daily allowance, which is also called RODA. Uh, so, what's the recommended daily allowance for vitamins A and E? Well, for vitamin A, uh, it is 900 micrograms for men, the equivalent of which is 3,000 international units. And for women, the recommended daily allowance for vitamin A will be 700 micrograms, uh, the equivalent of which is 2,333 international units. So you need to look at the multivitamin bottle that you have and see whether what is there is exceeding the 900 micrograms or 700 micrograms uh, in that very bottle. If the dose in it is listed as international units, you should also look to see whether it is exceeding 3,000 international units or 2,333 international units. So what about vitamin E? Well, for vitamin E, the recommended daily allowance for Vitamin E is 15 milligrams daily, uh, the equivalent of which is 22 international units. So you really don't want to be exceeding this in your uh, multivitamin uh, constitution. So here's what I want you to do next. Now, what I'm about to say now is based on my personal opinion. Seeing as there's no science to guide us, I've got to give you some sort of uh, guidance uh, to go by. So. What I want you to do next is to pick up the bottle of the multivitamin supplement that you've got with you at home. And what I want you to do is look at the dosages of the vitamin A and vitamin E that you've got in that very multivitamin supplement. If the dosages of the vitamin A and vitamin E are within the recommended daily allowance, then you may continue to use that multivitamin uh, supplement. But of course, uh, if the dosages exceed the recommended daily allowance, then my view is that you should discard that multivitamin uh, supplement. Why? Well, don't forget that you're actually getting some vitamin A and vitamin E from your diet anyway. Secondly, it also means that the multivitamin supplement manufacturer is borrowing a leaf from the uh, standalone vitamin supplement uh, manufacturer. 
uh, where they tend to use higher doses of uh, the nutrient. So for instance, uh, this vitamin E supplement that I've got here has got 200 international units of vitamin E. That's way more than the 22 international units that I need daily. Also, the uh, vitamin A supplement here has 8,000 international units of vitamin A, which is way more than the 3,000 international units that I need daily as a man. So, uh, the belief in the supplement manufacturing circles is that more is better, which is not always true. Because when you use very high doses, you overwhelm the receptors in the cell, and uh, not just that, you're causing uh, nutritional disproportion, nutritional lopsidedness, nutritional imbalance uh, that tends to cause cellular mayhem. And that, I think, is the origin of some of the problems we have with the uh, supplements. So um, that's what I want you to do. Now, uh, you are in luck because uh, in the next video, I'm going to share with you 16 fantastic sources of vitamin A. So be on the lookout for the next video where I'm going to be talking about the best food sources of vitamin A. That's coming up uh, in the next uh, couple of days. So hopefully you got some value from this very video. If you did, uh, please give the video a thumbs up. Please like the video. And also please share this video with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues. If you got any questions, any comments regarding this video presentation, go ahead, leave your comments or questions down below. I think that's about it. Until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing. Ah.